this is the last uh, the, the last round before I pass the floor to the audience. And I want to ask you in one minute if it's possible to give us one recommendation about how we can link better social media and climate change in the near future. Because it's clear you're talking about that. Uh, the tools are clear. The point on one of the big challenge are the contents about that. So one recommendation, one means, and we start in the opposite way. First, Amanda. Um, I would say the one thing that we have to do is look at a, a multiple a multiple audience numbers and come up with messaging that's specific to them and may interest them. And that is from a child and obviously being concerned with the compliance issues with that and where they're, what is important to them and what's going to drive them to action versus someone who is politically charged versus somebody who has deep pockets. I think that it's about creating solid messages for multiple audiences and making sure that there is a true social element to that and we're not talking at people, preaching to them, or using the same lingo that every other cause has. I think one of the first things that we need to do is also realize that there is a division between those that have the answers and those that are seeking the answers. Um, everyone here uh, that is at the table, you said you were 36, we're the same age. Um, we are above that fold in terms of, uh, you know, the, that we could be literally the bridge um, in terms of uh, our use of social media um, and in communicating with those younger than us uh, as well as those that are older than us. Some of you are using social media, some of you are not. I'm not saying you're old, I'm just saying you, know, you probably don't use social media. Um, but I think we need to realize that how we communicate the solution so that those that are not using the same medium to listen to what, what it is that we are trying to say or the solutions that you're trying to, uh, to, um, to convey, that they're on the same platform. That's why social media is important. It is that connector, that bridge between those that have the knowledge, uh, but not necessarily uh, the, the tools to reach those where it will have the greatest impact. If we're using social media on the continent in Africa, we're reaching those people that are able to spread the message, uh, that are able to uptake the message and really multiply it to their locale. One cell phone in a village um, in Uganda, for example, can be accessed or disseminate a message to 10 to 20 other members um, of, of that village. So how we communicate is important as the message that we're communicating. Paul. I would say that it's important to understand that social media is a facet to a campaign. It is not a campaign. You have to understand that anytime you're trying to get your message out to a wide audience, you can't ignore mainstream media. Broadcast, television, radio, newspapers, magazines are vitally important in reaching a vast majority of the people in the world. Um, social media is great. You have to use it. It's an excellent tool for organizing, but it is narrow casting. And don't turn your back on traditional media because it is vitally important to get your message out. I, I would just, I was planning to say the same thing. And I think it's. By the way, I'm 36 too. <laughs> <laughs> So am I. So am I. <laughs> I think I think we're all uh, we're all qualified. <laughs> if I would add one thing is that, you know, it's it's especially if we're looking at Africa, where as I was saying earlier, accessibility and 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 uh, uh, even even mainstream media is not necessarily accessible in in remote areas in in, in villages. So we need to look at face. To, social media doesn't replace face to face dialogue. You know. Uh, the traditional way of awareness and communication. So what is the smart linkage between between these two two ways of doing th uh, aw awareness and, and, and communication? Thank you. Um, I'd like to actually just end by picking up on a couple of the points that, that have already been made. Um, I think number one, in terms of looking at the way forward for um, uh, Connect for Climate, um, this idea of linking between the linkage between mainstream media and social media is is a very important one. We need to find very clever ways of doing that because that works in both directions. Um, we need to do it because we need to have uh, it, this cannot be just a sort of navel gazing exercise. Um, uh, Amongst, um, amongst Africans, it needs to be getting the uh, messages out. 
and it needs to have a targeted audience. In the United States, we have the um, mass media talking about issues such as uh, clean coal. You know, we all see the ads which uh, come uh, on television, for example. And there isn't a constructive dialogue that then follows that, because when I look at the clean coal ads that come on to uh, on, on the mainstream media, I mean, this is the sort of people advocating these things are people you'd actually want to have, uh, you know, over for Christmas dinner. You know, how can we um, get the um, uh, social media to pick up on some of these issues? Another issue taking place in the U.S. Uh, we don't know where things are going to go with Kyoto. But we have, for example, um, uh, uh, question marks about whether or not the EPA would be allowed to regulate um, greenhouse gases. So to go back to um, one of the points made about how can you be more specific, maybe that is a way to get more voices around the world saying, actually, um, you know, this is having an impact on us. And this is not just for the United States, by the way. I mean, this needs to be done, you know, globally for, for all the major emitters. But, you know, I'm giving one specific example here. And finally, um, let's get the positive stories out. You know, um, Africa is looking at, for example, the, the Great Green Wall Project, which could bring agriculture and, and help to um, deal with the climate change issue much more effectively. Let's get some positive stories of, around that in terms of what's happening, how people are doing it. And finally, the point that was made, not everyone is accessing social media through computers, you know. Um, when Estrada in the Philippines fell, fell, it was because of texting, yeah? And text messaging goes along with a lot of people in Africa now have access to mobile phones. So we need to look at that in the African context as a very important way of, um, of spreading messages um, within that context. Thank you. Thanks, Angus. Jerry? I think when you're talking to youth, I think it especially that they have so many messages coming at them um, as just youth in general and uh, struggling to be, it's been a while since I was um, under 18. But understand that they, they are struggling with so many messages. And while social media allows for everyone to have a voice, that's also the flip side of that is there's a lot of voices out there for them to listen to. So the idea of aggregating some of these vertical uh, causes and things like that. There's just so much out there and so much noise that's hard for youth to pick, right? Wh which one should I go for? Which one should I support? Um, how How is my participation going to make a difference and help them understand w what what does the, what value are they bringing to the table um, if they participate in this one versus that one? Um, and the idea of making it locally relevant. How 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 is it going to help their world? Um, you know, I was uh, just in, I'll tell a little story, but I was just in Kenya and working with this group in Nairobi, the Nairobi slum. And um, to go off you, the, uh, the appropriate technology was not the internet. None of them had actually been on the internet, but they all had mobile phones and they were using their mobile phones um, and, and to share information. And I sat in the local radio station that we had helped build and uh, over 200 SMS uh, messages came in um, commenting on the dialogue that was happening on the radio. And so if you can start to engage them in using that appropriate technology um, and, and the technology that exists in their world and show how something can, can change because of their participation in it, you're much likely um, to create a situation that's more successful than if you're just getting followers and just getting likes on Facebook. If there's something actionable for them to do, um, they're going to be much more likely to participate participate in whatever it is. The, and another quick point is this idea, and there's a lot of talk about it in social media, but the idea of gaming, the under 18 crowd and youth in general and even up to 24, gaming is a huge piece of how they interact, um, whether it be you know, an angry girds type of thing. But if you can look at gaming as an opportunity to start to have a dialogue and sharing information, um, you can many times motivate them even if it's an award that they get a stamp on their uh, Twitter feed or whatever it is. But gaming shouldn't be overlooked as an opportunity. So I know that you know we finally came to a name, social media, for something that Amanda, for instance, has been doing for uh, uh, some years. Um, but I think we have to think beyond social media. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's a provocative statement, but that's really what it comes to. It's about people. 
people first. So Microsoft is launching the new phone and the new campaign will be people first. And people first means that I'm talking to you, to you, to you. I'm sending you a message. I'm sending you a Twitter feed. I'm sending you a station or something. Uh, when we built Soundtracker, it was uh, people want to have free music. Let's figure out a way to get them free music. People want to share with whoever is around them. Let's give them that. We didn't ask ourselves too many questions. As a small startup, what you want to do is to enable. Enable. Enable something. In our case, it's enable sharing of emotions and experiences through music. But the big lessons learned was if you ask to yourself too many questions, you're going to be building and trying to do something that is too complicated. And if it becomes too complicated, it's difficult to share and explain, compressing a message and so forth. So the recommendation for me to, would be to be extremely local. And I was really interested by the two websites that were shown before. The social media campaign or the campaign from bottom up was in, I think, at least 10 languages, and they were at, uh, right there. So 12 languages right at the top right. Whereas the campaign for Al Gore had the big picture of Al Gore at the beginning, at, you know, at the center, classic, you know, centralized, uh, top-down approach. So enable with whatever technology you are building or services you are building, the voice of allowing users to communicate one-on-one -on -one or one-to-many. They will figure out their way in their own language, in their own understanding, in their cultural context, even in their own uh, uh, age bracket context. So kids will talk about it in their way versus, uh, versus more grown-ups. So I would be worried less about uh, either a top-down or a multifaceted campaign and struggle with that and focus more on giving tools to people that can embrace in their language and their locality for change. Um, for me, I usually tell people that having access doesn't mean you're participating. Participating doesn't mean you are participating effectively. For African youth, we need to have the opportunity to build a capacity to effectively <coughs> use social media for change. Um, like like you rightly said, a lot of messages are out there, but we need to know what is the right message for us. What actions can we take from those messages? We need that capacity. Um, uh, like I said before, our capacity to engage on the social media cannot be compared to our peers living in Europe or in America because they're two different worlds. And secondly, um, one thing that I would recommend is that do not forget the very important news of radio. Radio is the most accessible media in, in African continent. It's everywhere. It can, it can reach millions and millions of people around the world. In families that they don't have internet, they have a radio. You don't have electricity, they have a radio that is powered by um, a battery. Do not forget that because that is another source. That's something that can never be taken away from the African culture, the radio. It's very important. And in modern, uh, in urban centers in, in Africa, you see people putting plugs in their ears and they're listening to radios. So these are something that we can use to give them the right information to do that. Like for me, I, I was taught how to use blogs. I was taught how to use social media. I did not just wake up to use social media. And I think this is something that the team looked at, building capacity of African youth to engage, to, to use social media effectively and meaningfully to engage and raise awareness and hold government accountable on climate change issues. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for each one of the panelists.